Hey everyone, welcome back to the State of the Web. My guests are Addy Osmani and Katie Hempenius. They're engineers on the Chrome team making the web fast. And today we're going to be talking about a web performance technique that takes the guesswork out of resource loading. Let's get started. So Addy, welcome back to the show. And Katie, thanks for being here. Great to be here. Thanks for having us. You've developed a technique called predictive fetching, but let's set aside the predictive part for a second and just talk about fetching. What is that? So fetching is the process of going and getting a resource off the network. Could be your JavaScript, your web fonts, or something else. Now, um, as web developers, we're usually shipping like a mountain of code down to the browser. And the browser's just gonna scream when you do that because it doesn't really know what's really important. Um, thankfully, there are a number of different resource hints that have come to the web platform over the last couple of years to help you kind of give a hint to the browser that, hey, some of these things are slightly more important than these other things. Um, things like DNS prefetch and preconnect, which are useful for pre-resolving your DNS names for different um, origins you might connect to. Um, preconnect is useful for warming up connections to those, those origins as well. Uh, and we've also got sort of prefetch? Yes, there's prefetch, preload, and pre-render, and they all take it a step further and actually uh, load the resource instead of just setting up the connection in advance. And uh, pre-render is actually deprecated, so uh, prefetch is something that people should be paying attention to. Preload and prefetch sound very similar. What's the distinction there? Uh, prefetch uh, is intended to be used for resources that you're gonna be using like on the next page load, whereas preload is intended for resources that you're gonna be using on the current page load. Okay, so I was looking up on HTTP Archive how these things are being used, and most people are using the less intensive hints, such as like pre-connect. Very few people are using pre-render probably because it's deprecated, but I noticed that um, Google Fonts is actually using it a lot. Can you explain how they're using it and why? Yeah, so um, one thing Google Fonts does is uh, it's got a CSS file Right, that you're going to include when you're trying to add those web fonts to your pages. And then it's also going to be referencing like the actual web fonts in there. So it could be the WAF files, for example. And those are hosted on two different sort of CDN origins. And when they're pre-connect, when they're telling you to pre-connect, you're pre-connecting effectively to those two different domains to shave off some of that connection warm-up time as much as possible. Um, that can have a benefit to your page load times, especially if uh, web fonts are pretty critical to the experience. If I prefetch something, is it guaranteed to actually load? It will load eventually, presumably. Um, part of the reason why it's called resource hints is ultimately you're just like hinting towards the browser, you're expressing a preference for when it's loaded, but the browser is going to use its own heuristics to decide the order in which it's gonna fetch resources. Okay, so if there's a lot going on in the page, the network is congested, it might not load during that time, the browser will wait until things are quiet. Yeah, and then so that's why you have to be kind of careful and judicious about how you use these resource hints because if you say, you know, everything's important, nothing's important. Mm -hmm. um, so you really want to prioritize the, the most important resources. Do developers have a way to prioritize what should get loaded in what order? There are upcoming specs that will help with things like that, things like priority hints, which are a emerging uh, standard proposal where you as an author can say, okay, well, uh, the importance of this resource is low or the importance of this resource is high. Still in a, an experimental phase in Chrome at the moment, but we're thinking about this. Okay, so that's fetching. Now let's move into the predictive part. What, what is predictive about it? So when developers are trying to decide what to prefetch or preload or use any of these resources for these days, a lot of the time they don't have a lot of data that they're using to make those decisions. Um, what we observe sites doing is you know, they'll take a look at their home page and some of the pages that they consider to be popular, and they'll just drop in a few potentially preloads or prefetches in there because they know that, you know, uh, a user going to a category page for groceries is likely to go check out the vegetables page or something like that. Um, wouldn't it be neat if we used data to drive some of our web performance decisions a little bit more? So um, one of the things that people can do actually is take a look at their analytics to help with deciding these things. Um, if you take a look at the Google Analytics reporting API, it actually gives you quite a lot of rich data about the different behavioral patterns your users have. So it can give you insight into things like, you know, um, what pages are users coming into? What is the next page they're probably going to exit to? Um, and 
Using that kind of information, you can actually start to build up a very simple understanding of you know, those types of patterns so you can apply it to the rest of your site. So any, anybody watching this that's using Google Analytics can take advantage of this today. We've actually got like a, a simple demo they can check out. You can just like select what your, your GA account is and take a look at a table of some probabilities. And the future for this is to start pulling in more data so you can make richer predictions. Currently, if you pull down your data from Google Analytics and wanted to make some predictions, you'll just be looking at you know, what page do people visit most frequently from this current page. I mean, you could consider that like a very, very simple Markov chain, um, you know, Markov chain with one state. But if you wanted to maybe improve the accuracy of it, you could start incorporating other signals that are available uh, to us. For instance, yeah, you can use different browser APIs to maybe detect um, the locale or the platform that the user is on and see if you can incorporate that into your models to improve the prediction accuracy. Wow. So this is like really cool. This is using machine learning to optimize the web performance of the page, of the whole site, because a user journey goes from multiple pages. And if you're able to predict where they're going or sites that have uh, a well-lit path for users to go through from one page to another, then you can kind of clear that path for them and make sure that they can get there more quickly, right? Yeah. One of the great things about applying machine learning to web performance is that as data um, improves over time, the accuracy of your models are also going to improve. So we're not just looking at, say, you know, uh, five users on your site are doing this and that. We're actually looking at the entire corpus of what your users are doing and trying to learn, okay, well, what are, what are the patterns that we see in there? Um, on that note, something that we've been trying to do is connect up these two worlds of prefetching and uh, the data that's available to users and, and a little bit of machine learning to help with the prefetching space. So how can developers start using this? Is this open source code now? It is. Um, we have a couple. We have two different paths for you to get started. Um, one is uh, adding a script to your website that will just um, ping a server that you set up, and the server will send down whatever um, page it thinks the user is going to go to next, and then it will append a tag to the page that, that prefetches that page, and. Uh, that's great because you don't have to maintain those, those prefetch um, tags at all. And so you know you're always making accurate um, and smart prefetches. You know, it's not something like, oh, I added it to the page and we redesigned our website and now it's out of date. So that's great. Um, the other path you can uh, try is if you use Webpack. Um, we have a plugin that allows you to start um, bundling based on you know the, the paths and that your users are following, and so you're making intelligent decisions about how you bundle and ship your code. Okay, so we're calling that data-driven bundling, and the idea is that um, yeah, we can we can use information that comes back from analytics that's modeled using ML to decide what's a prefetch, but we can also um, factor that in using Webpack to actually chunk up the code in a, in a more efficient way. Um, this, this entire effort is something that we're calling Guest.js. So it's open source. It's available for people to go and check out today if they're, they're interested. We've got some demos and everything. It's amazing. So I worked at YouTube for a few years, and they used to do something where, or they still do, where you're in a playlist. It will start rendering the next video in the playlist when you reach towards the end. So this is like taking it to the next level where it's like general purpose for a website. They can start uh, preloading their content on the next page. And by doing it at build time also, you're ensuring that you're just sending the content down that the user's actually going to need there. Yeah, I think that what, what we would love to see come out of this effort is just more interest and excitement about the idea of exploring, you know, how can, how can data be better used to drive our web performance optimizations? Um, is machine learning something that can actually help ensure that we, when we're making these optimizations, are, are doing it in the right cases and are fetching the right types of resources that are actually gonna be useful and valuable to the end users? T touching on something Katie mentioned earlier, um, one, one big problem that arises when you are thinking about prefetching is how do you avoid overfetching things? And uh, one of the ways that we've tried to factor that into Guest.js is by um, not prefetching as aggressively if uh, we think that you're on a connection that's effectively sort of 2G, 3G, something that's on the, the slightly lower end and slower. Um, if you are in a decent connection, you know, we can, we can go all out, we can prefetch quite a lot more. But I think it's important to be considerate about some of these types of optimizations. And again, thanks to probably work by, by Ilya, 
rubric. Uh, we've got things like the navigator.connection.effective type API, mm -hmm. which enable this to be possible. So for users on 2G, they might not see a lot of these predictive fetching. They actually won't see any okay. because um, what Chrome does is, well, they won't see any if they're on Chrome because Chrome will not do prefetching if you're on 2G because uh, the consequences for making like a wrong prediction are so high, so we'll only pre-connect. Um, and this goes for any resource hint on 2G. Web developers could look at their analytics to understand how much of their user base is on 2G, and then that'll give them an idea of how much runway they can get out of this. Um, I'm curious about the page load improvements that you've seen so far in your testing. How fast could this get? So we've, it's still early days for these efforts, and, and I, I do have to give a nod to folks like Mark Edmondson, who've been exploring the sort of machine learning and predictive fetching space for, for a number of years. Um, the wins we've seen so far are anywhere up to a 40% improvement in page load times. Um, I do have to stress, this is, these are all sort of demo applications, um, not, not used heavily in production just yet. Uh, but we are working with a number of sites to explore, like what, what are the real wins that they see at scale? Um, but it, it appears like there's some interesting opportunities to improve page load performance there. When things go right, is the experience instantaneous? Like these will click a link and then it'll just appear? It can be, yeah. That's great. So that's really like what we're after, right? Instantaneous page loading, there's no latency at all. Yeah, I, it's ideally. the holy grail. Yeah, it's the holy grail. It'd be great if like we can, we can use all of this data and all of these techniques so that you know, while you're, while you're reading the content for a page, we're already prefetching things. You, we, we think you have a high chance of clicking on next so that they load instantly. They're already in the user's local cache. And um, the rest of the experience is they click through from those other pages and get deeper and deeper into a site also load instantly. So some, some interesting work ahead of us, mm -hmm. but. Yeah. And so. it really is a great user experience when something loads instantly. It's very cool and it really makes the content much more engaging. For a page that loads quickly, it's not just, yay, the page is fast, the user is actually going to engage yeah, more, I mean, they're going to sign up and buy things. You can definitely tell the difference. It's right. very cool. So I have to ask, what can developers do to ensure that they're preserving user privacy? As uh, you have this like machine learning model that says if you're on page A, you're probably going to go to page B. That tells the user something about how other users are behaving on the website, right? I think that um, there are many ways that you can implement these techniques where it's primarily done on the server side um, and you're exposing less of those behavioral patterns to the, to the end site. You can also look at ways of just generalizing that information um, so that uh, the model isn't quite um, as, as granular and uh, it, it certainly wouldn't um, expose things like fingerprinting, for example, because it's modeled based on the entire corpus of user base and not individual users um, at the moment. Um, but I, I think that that just requires some additional care when you're implementing these techniques in general. Um, or for instance, uh, just be careful about the sample sizes you use. So for instance, if only five people have, have visited that page, maybe you shouldn't be using preloading on that because it could almost be exposing information because it's such a small sample size. And that's also something you probably shouldn't be drawing conclusions from anyway, because that's you know, five people isn't a lot to make a generalized assumption about how people use your site. Is there anything browsers or Chrome could do to nativize some of these techniques? I think over the last couple of years, well, for, for a very long time, uh, Chrome has explored these ideas of natively trying to uh, intelligently kind of prefetch pages that a user is likely to need. Um, I think that those, those explorations are still ongoing because, because of some of the things we talked about today, things like how can we ensure that we're not overfetching on certain connection types or in certain device classes. But um, I, think, I think that to the extent that browsers can explore this stuff, I'd love for us to try getting it uh, done in a, in a slightly more automated way. Um, until we're there, uh, still lots of web platform APIs and techniques folks can use to, to get this done themselves. In the future, like, how else do you see machine learning being applied in web development? Besides just web performance, there's so many more applications of it. Um, I think there's a, a lot people can do to just you know, improve the user experience. Um, for instance, I know recently I was going to install some stuff and it detected that I was running Ubuntu and directed me straight to the Ubuntu instructions. And you're like, oh, that's cool. Um, and that's actually not that hard to, you know, to implement. It's simply using a line of code to detect what uh, platform a user's on. So I think there's like a lot of th that's things like that um, that people could implement right away. Customization of the user experience. Yeah. So.
Like imagine, imagine if you're coming to a shopping site and based on your previous behavioral patterns, it was able to reconstruct the UI in some way that would um, drive further engagement, maybe get you to, to see some things that you would like a little bit more um, and drive a few more purchases like that. That's another implementation detail that you could use. Addie and Katie, thank you so much for being on the show. This was fascinating. Thanks for having, Thanks for having us. us. So if you'd like to find out more about Guest.js, we have links in the description. Check it out. And let us know what you think about machine learning on the web. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.